Hi, it's Russ from Protos Expert, and I want to give you a first show and tell of Loom from Air. It's one of the new instruments of Air. We've highly anticipated because we've a lot of us have been Air fans for a long time since the early days of of Air when they were part of DigiDesign and for later on with Avid. But now they're free, and they were, these were two instruments they started when they were, they were still at Avid. One was uh, Loom, and one of them was Vacuum Pro. So I'm going to give you a show and tell of this. Now a bit of history about Loom. Loom is es essentially an additive synthesizer. Now additive synthesis is one of those things. It's a bit bit. Uh, can be a bit geeky, a bit uh, sort of science class stuff because it's hard to get your head around. I'll kind of try and give you a 101 from a thick guy from London uh, that, that, that hopefully most of you will understand. And if I'm going to tell you from the from the start, if I can understand additive synthesis, then anyone can. Let me tell you the basic uh, fun, the basic fundamental principles of additive synthesis. And the first one is this: that every sound originates from a pure sine wave. And then all of those waveforms, when you add them together, you add, you add a combination of waveforms together and adjust the the volume of them or the amplitude, and uh, the uh, the gain of those, the gain as we could say, of those waveforms, then you end up getting different sounds. So essentially, every sound is a combination of a load of waveforms, a load of pure waveforms stuck together, and the, that pure waveform is a sine wave, and the sine wave is that lovely kind of sweeping. Uh, round top, round bottom. So when you look at uh, Loom to start with, you, you'll see uh, a, a kind of trace there, and that's re that's re representing the harmonic structure of that sound. And each of these is a an interval of a harmonic that comes from the pure harmonic. I hope I'm st you're still with me. The best way to get your head around it, well, if if I'm still not making sense and not explaining it very clearly, is an organ. Uh, was the first additive synthesis because basically it took it took it took tones and then used intervals of a single tone and combined those together. If you remember, if you look at like a Hammond organ or a church organ, you have the draw bars and as you draw them out. Each one of them add them in, you get a different sound, and that's how additive synthesis works. And you can do it in a synthesizer. It's not been widely used because it is so complicated to get your head around. So a lot of people would not start a sound from scratch, but when you start to get it, it makes an awful lot of sense. Uh, so what Loom is, is a combination, is an additive synth with some real great extras built in. The next thing I want to say is the way to understand Loom is that these are components that you just plug into it. So it's a bit like if you look, I've got this mixing desk here. Now, when people look at mixing desks to start with, they look at all the channels, especially if you look at, at like a 48 channel board and you think, wow, there's so much stuff there. Where do I start? Well, here's the thing about Loom is that the best way to look at it is these are all just individual channels that you're plugging in as part of the path. If you just look at them one at a time, it doesn't seem so daunting. So the first time you open up the Loom uh, GUI, you think, where the heck do I start? Well, where you start is one at a time. So I've I've created a sound here that's just basically a very simple uh, sort of piano-y type sound. I'm just going to just move my mic for a sec so you can do this. Now, if you start to play with it, what it's very reminiscent of as you start to use Loom is a number of things. The first thing it's reminiscent of is DX synthesis, uh, DX7s. Another one is Casio. Uh, p uh, p uh, that phase distortion PD synthesis and all those kind of synthy sounds because they were very kind of they were very like additive synthesis because in its very nature FM synthesis is taking um, uh, what they call carriers and modulators and then you combine them together to create a new sound a complex sound and as you add two waveforms together and change the the volume of each waveform as they react to each other you'll get harmonics added in and a different sound and that's how FM synthesis works and face distortion was a bit similar so all the sounds in this are a bit like that but much richer so I want to give you a few sounds so the minute you say DX synthesis you think oh wow that's that's kind of crap bass crap s strings but they've got Richard Devine to do some sounds so here's a string sound that he's made and I've done some slight adjusting adjustments to the filtering but generally left it as it is but this is uh, a, a string pad
you can hear, very, very nice. Then let's go to something else completely different. Let's go down to this ARP sound and this, these kind of sounds. Very, very nice. Let's just gonna stop that because that goes on forever when you leave it. And then some bell kind of sounds. And as I played this as well, might be sort of sounds you often get with Omnisphere. This is a fraction of the price and certainly a fraction of the work, the load on your CPU. And bass. You might want to put your sub on there because that is a really, 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 really uh, Then I've got a sub as well, a sub bass. Let's really go low. As I say, we have these different modules that we can use, and uh, two of them are fixed. The FX module is fixed, and the Spectral Distortion module here is fixed. And after that, everything is up for grabs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this back to, uh, to the start, and just sort of give you a kind of guided tour around the GUI, getting started, that kind of thing. The best way to get started is to play with the presets. It comes with a fantastic set of presets. Mark and the team over in Bremen, and I say Richard Devine, if you see these RD ones, these are all Richard Devine presets that he's done, which is cool. There's everything from some mad wobble basses all the way to those beautiful strings and, and everything in between. And it's a very unique synth, and I suppose that's the big thing we're looking for when we're, we're trying to create new sounds. And straight away, as I thought about this, it's going to be for electronic music, for dance music. It's going to be great for those that are doing soundscapes, those that are doing composing, uh, some music for film, that kind of stuff. This is perfect and up the street for you. I just want to show you some basics first. So say the spectral distortion. So if we talk about the principle again, so if we went to root, Now that's giving me a pure sine wave because it's the root. So there's no harmonics involved apart from the root, which is gonna give me a sine wave and that's how it would work. And then if we went to a third, it's gonna give me a square kind of sound. Now there's a fantastic, fantastic wiki page all about additive synthesis. And if you really want to get under the cover, and you, you don't want to use the presets, and the presets are fantastic anyway. If you want to start messing and working out what's, what all this kind of stuff does, then you can go and learn that and learn how it all works. So what you can then do is start adding different things in. So we can come here, and we could go to... Uh, so what I'm going to do is do something slightly more complex than that. That's not very complex. So I'm going to go for... Uh, I'm going to go for odd partials. And then I'm going to add some more stuff in. So I'm going to add a basic filter in there. So you got, so we'll go for low pass. And straight away, our filters have got things like uh, they've got envelope. So envelope two. If we come down here, we've got pitch. Got a a a h d s r, uh, which is attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. And that and we've got uh, three envelopes and a slope envelope as well. And then LFO. So there's lots of modulation sources you can use to to then start changing these. So if I wanted, I could turn that off altogether, have none. Of course the emphasis is effectively a resonance. So let's add some more stuff in there. So I'm going to go in here and this is where you can start doing some really cool stuff. So I might detune it. Add another module in, just stick that one in as well. We could add some uh, some random drops in or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
The thing you start to, to start to get a feeling for as you start to play this is is that the the word partials comes in. Of course, the word partials was used in in uh, in D D sit there D fifty synthesis from Roland, and, and you get reminiscent Roland sounds on this as well. And some of the presets feel very D fifty. We'll go in and we will go to phrase, and what we can do with phrase. Then we could add some a, a, the uh, some envelope in there. Let's bring that back a bit. Turn that down as well. Kind of clipping meter there. Very helpful. We can add some effects in there. Some delay. Some reverb. So I'll listen to that now, and we start to get some really nice complex sound. At the moment, our poly's on four, so let's push that poly up to six notes. Open up that low pass filter again. And the sky's the limit, so you just keep adding in these modules. Turn another one on. And we could go for the modulator. So as you can hear for soundscapes, it's really, really nice. So we've got some clipping here again. Let's bring that back a bit. Because remember, it's additive synthesis, this stuff being added. What it gets really nice then is we can then come to the morph mode and this is where it gets really exciting because we can come in and we have this complexity stuff first and over here. Change the character of the sound. Now all of these then could be written to these points on this morph grid and then we can start adding them in. So we could do something very simple like go from A to B. So we could add a point there and a point here. I've got this grid. Now if you've used wavetable synthesis from PPG then this will also be reminiscent as well. So there's lots of kind of technologies going on here that are, that are very similar. So we could say okay at, at A we want the sound to be there and we just go here right click store that, that state. And then we could do, put, put that there, go to B, go there, about there, right click, store state. So, and if we turn this on now, and also then we can alternate it, be far more. And this clipping meter is really handy. Of course, we then get complex. Then we could put a state in over here somewhere. 
let's just turn that off for a sec and we'll store that in. That's going into the middle there somewhere. Oh. state C. Put that back on. Let's put something else over to state C as well then. So let's just stop that a second. Come back here. Let's turn the reverb. Put that as state C there. Now we'll see that morphing around. Of course, this speed could be as fast or as slow as you want, and we could change the, the way it works in terms of the sync. It can sync with the or just be freeform. You can see it has vast, vast potential to create some really, really cool sounds. But as I say, if you then come back to the presets, there's some really cool stuff in here. So there's Meat Loom is the... Very nice. Sounds, as I say, it sounds like 80s sort of stuff. Now, the thing I haven't talked to you about yet is you can bring waveforms in, and when you bring waveforms in, you can then mess with them. So effectively, you have a vocoder. So here we have we have a sound come in. Let's just turn all of these off for a second. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. And after all, and after, and after all. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. And after all, it's just the emotion that matters. So, a vocoder. Because you can bring in your own waveforms. You just go out and you can go anywhere and just and uh, select an audio file. Go to the next one. If you've got a whole load in, in a file, you can go anywhere in there and just go up to your stuff. Uh, and I'm there in samples at the moment, it's just going to load it. I could literally bring a drum kit in and then use that for a sound. Make it as... Make it as complex or as simple as I want. Load something else in, but you could, as I say, load anything you like. In so I could say you could load in like a, uh, a synth, all sorts of stuff. I've been loading in bass sounds. Uh, just, uh, just find one. Let's just find something uh, a bit more. Let's load that one in. Then I can mess with it again. But as I say, in terms of vocoder, that's really cool as well. So yeah, you can load your own waveforms and do really mad things with them. And say, get them really complex sounding. Then you can go to different groups of sounds as well. So here's uh, some really cool bass stuff. Yeah. 
It's one of Richard Devine's. As I say, what I love about Lou is that it doesn't sound like other stuff. Now, straight away, I know people are going to watch this, they're going to say, oh, X, Y, and Z do that. Uh, but I, I think that Loom has a unique place as a synth. There are other additive synths out there, of course. So if you then get some atmospheres. You see, some of them are huge. They've got virtually every, well, they have got every module on them. Some of them are really slow and take time to build up. Play another pad. That's nice. So I've been playing with it for a day and I've been uh, doing some stuff. So I, so I just put a track on here. I'm just going to play it to you now, which is just a few uh, sounds that... Uh, just mute that because that's an, a never-ending sound on it. And strings harp, uh, some bells, uh, two basses, uh, and just a backbeat that I've, I've just dragged in from the loop library, and just to give you a sort of sound that you can get. So this is me, uh, four tracks, uh, and a few minutes with, with Loom to, to give you uh, this kind of ideas. So have a listen, uh, and uh, then I'll say my goodbyes at the end. Beautiful strings from Richard Devine. So there we are. That's Loom. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for letting me do that first show and tell. And uh, I'm looking forward to when it releases. I think it's in about a couple of weeks' time. But uh, well done on the guys at Air. This is a very unique instrument from Air, like nothing they've done before, and well worth considering. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>